Is to them. Don't preach to the choir. Exactly. Go and find someone that isn't part of the choir. Exactly. Okay, so a few questions from OSS members. There were okay. some really, really good ones. Um, what is the one thing that you want people to stop asking you about when it comes to race? I think it's going to have to be the question, well, what can I do? Um, mm. Because there's a reason why I'm, I'm a writer and not yeah. a politician or a cult leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, the reason is that I wanted to like be able to express and call attention to and, and name things that weren't being named. And uh, I feel at this point I've probably done a good job of that. Um, but I certainly don't want to be like prescriptive about what people should be doing about it. And I think something that sort of like scares me about how the book is moving around the world is how, how sometimes my readers are really ready to hand over their agency mm. to me yes. and be like, I'm so, I find this so awful and terrible. So Renny, what should I do about it? And I'm like, no, no, that's not what I wanted to happen at all. Yeah. I wanted you to feel empowered to be like, right, I'm going to actually tackle this and make some change. I need yeah. to examine how can I go about doing that? Mm. Uh, and I, I, that scares me, that worries me. It's a hard one because I, I often find that actually, I find it quite debilitating realizing that I feel like, oh, other people know a lot more than I, I know. So I should just defer to them or like, I don't, and, and, it, and it can be, and it can be that way, but I, I, I guess it's like, I love that, that phrase, like, forget your perfect offering. Like, you don't have, like, somebody that I was, um, I was actually at a trans training last week and speaking to a member from that community, and, and I was just really heartened to hear her say, like, yeah, just forget your perfect offering. You don't, you don't have to do it perfectly. Like, people do notice and care about your intentions. And as long as you're, like, open and willing to learn and receive feedback and, and do your own work, then... Don't not get involved, not say anything because you're, you're so concerned that you have to do it perfectly. For sure, That's really absolutely. Helpful comment. Because I cannot co sign or like approve, okay, that's the right thing to do. Uh, and you are doing that perfectly. And I yeah. think that's really weird and dangerous for me to do that. Like, mm. I just want people to feel equipped and empowered. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying that all my readers are, are not feeling empowered. I think that I've heard some incredible and amazing stories from readers who mm. have told me what they've been doing after reading the book, you know, putting up displays of like, authors of colour in, you know, primary schools or uh, one book's talk, uh, a, a little boy, he, he must have been like a teenager, so he wasn't that little. Mm. He must have been about 14 or 15, white boy. He came up to me and he was like, so I read your book and um, I really love maths. And so I realised in my school, I go to a very multicultural school, the like higher the math set was, the whiter the group was, and that was really disturbing to me. So I sat down and I did the calculations and I worked out what was happening here and then I presented it to an assembly. And I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> like That's this amazing. is amazing, yeah. you know. People ask me the same thing about um, gender equality, like what can I do? I'm like, well just, and to be honest, I needed to take my own advice. Like the space you work in, the spaces that you are in, like working with Time's Up and like trying to structurally change some of the problems within my own place of work. Mm. Um, but I, I agree with you. It's like being creative about your own specific context and how you can bring your understanding into what you're already doing. For sure. And, and neither you or I can no, um, we can't assess. No. <laughs> like if somebody comes up to us who we don't know, we can't be like, well, uh, what's your job? Like, yeah. where do you work? Who do you hang out <laughs> with? Where do you eat? Like, where do you what go to hobbies? party? Like, uh, yeah, so every person is the expert in, in mm. you know, their spheres of influence. I believe mm. that's the phrase. I'm going to try and ask a couple of questions from the OSS Instagram. Um, so my mum is a junior school librarian. Can Renny suggest any books around the topics of feminism, race and intersectionality for younger readers? For sure. I mean, I think that like, um, first of all, like think about those as themes rather than topics uh, mm. for young readers mm. because those themes crop up a lot in books for younger readers books. often from authors of colour mm. so I brought one of my favourites which is uh, Noughts and Crosses by Mallory oh, yeah. Blackman which I is loved this book yes. I was obsessed with this book I haven't up. read it since I was a child but I literally like this Couldn't book put it down. which is essentially like a dystopian like future where the racial power dynamic has flipped mm -hmm. uh, is incredible yeah. and I, I believe it's set in Britain and yeah. Mallory Blackman like black British children's author so talented and there's a bit in this book that resonated with me when I read it as a child and it's the um, description of Callum who is uh, the white character mm. who's lower class um, he cuts himself and he puts a plaster on and he notices mm. that the plaster is far deeper than the colour of his skin. And that's, it's sort of used as like emblematic as 
as to like what the norm is in that mm. society. And that really set my head spinning as a mm. child to think about the plasters that I had in my bathroom cabinet mm. and how they certainly weren't my skin colour. So Yeah, and there's also something really beautiful about the metaphor of like even the wound that you try to heal, even like what you try to to put on to heal the wound isn't the right medicine or colour or cover or whatever else. It's Absolutely. really deep. In your book, you discuss how the conviction of Stephen Lawrence's killers was a missed opportunity to have a public conversation of racism and its lingering existence institutionally and structurally. Do you feel like constructive conversations on race have been able to happen in response to current recent events, specifically the royal wedding? So I think that the royal wedding was really interesting. I personally took a vow of silence <laughs> around the royal wedding because I was being asked constantly, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, come and be a pundit. And But one thing that I thought to myself was, um, these conversations about race were happening. I often saw some of my like activist friends on the TV discussing it, and I thought these people are amazing at talking about current events in general. Like, why are they only being hauled out mm, to discuss race? Yeah. One of the things I sort of said was um, the way that the British media wanted to discuss it was almost like it was a Obama moment. And but the truth is that like two people met and they fell in love, and I'm happy for them because love is great. Yes, <laughs> and love like, is awesome. But yeah. no one was elected here, and so I, I thought it was a bit of a red herring to discuss mm. it nationally as though, mm. you know, Britain had elected Meghan Markle. Mm. What happened was that she fell in love with Prince Harry, and I'm happy for them. Yeah. And like, I, I watched it like everyone else, and I was like, oh, weddings are nice. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but it wasn't... Um, it yeah. wasn't a like reflection of what society has elected. Mm. It almost felt a little bit like a bomb after Brexit yeah, and all of those things, yeah, yeah. you know, because then people were like, yay, uh, this is like Britain's multicultural society. And I, I'm like, that's, that's not actually what's happening here. And I'm happy for them. Um, so yeah. I sometimes worry that, you know, the people who commission these sort of discussions are a little on la-la land when it comes to these mm. things. And, and mm. the truth is that um, there's still real injustice happening. So yeah. maybe put the mic there. Yeah. I'm not saying don't cover the wedding. It's nice. But like, let's not disproportionately say that this is a balm for racism Problem solved in the world. Now. Yeah. Exactly. Problem solved. Um, OK, I'd like to end by just thanking you. And Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, for talking to me, answering all these questions. Um, last question. Um, if you could pick a book for our shed shelf readers, what would it be? OK, I also brought this book. This yeah. is, my, is my, one of my favourite fiction books. This is for you, actually, because I've oh, already got a copy. Thank you. I ruined mine in a hot tub. <laughs> 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 um, Thanks, story. <laughs> it's August Town by Kai Miller. Mm. One of my favourite fiction books I've read probably in the last decade. It's set in Jamaica, and Kai Miller's a Jamaican writer, although he taught in the UK in Manchester for some time. Mm. And um, it's a rich, gorgeously written story about, um, about life in this particular area, August Town, and race and gender and religion and structures of power, and the concept of the term Babylon, mm. which essentially, I guess, means like white structural power. Uh, it's, it's an amazing book. And, Thank you. you absolutely need to read it. Okay, amazing. Amazing, I'm, amazing. I'm just sitting on my hands waiting for Kai to write another work of fiction. <laughs> it's really nice actually to have a piece of fiction to like, sort of balance your non-fiction contribution. So this is really exciting. Thank you. Yay. Definitely choose it for the book club. For okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, get it in there. <laughs> okay, I need to speedily read this. Excellent. Um, so nice talking to you. Likewise, Emma. And thank you for awesome. signal boosting my book. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>